I'm out of scotch, so it's come down to good old tequila. I took a shot earlier, and I thought, hey, wait a minute. I need to reread in this gold book. I can't be... It's just been a stressful week, and I was going to just have one shot. But... Looks like I'll be having about... Mm, well, if I only read one chapter, probably about five or six. I forget exactly how many. I'm going to skip chapter... 15 and 16 of 2nd Nephi, which are really uh, chapter 5 and 6 of Isaiah. Uh, there's some amusing things I could go through, but uh, there's not really much in the way of drinks. There's a, maybe one or two. And 17 is far more interesting. It contains uh, that these... This is where the famous messianic prophecies of Isaiah uh, come to pass. And chapter 17 of 2nd Nephi and Isaiah 7. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that reason, and that's reason, not reason. There's no, there is no reason to be found in this book. This is R E. Z I N, I think. Uh, I just yeah. Uh, king uh, that reason, King Assyria and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up towards Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Well, let's get that drink out of the way. Oh, I should have got my lime juice. I'm trying to cut back on salt, but you know, got to you know, know where to set your priorities. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of wood are moved with the wind. Trees of wood. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, uh, thou, and Shir Jas Hub, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. And say unto him, Take heed, and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted. For the, this is to Ahaz, the king of uh, uh, king of the Jews, Ahaz. It's a little before the events in this book, so that's why they figured they probably would be able to have possession of them. all these Isaiah books, you know, before they leave in 600 B.C. <sighs> And say to him, Take heed, Ahaz, <laughs> and be quiet, and fear not, uh, neither be faint-hearted, for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of reason with Syria and the son of Remaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a, a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it. Yea, the son of Tabil, thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Oh, I might be waking up late tomorrow. Ah, that was nice. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is reason. 
and wherein it within and within three score and five years shall Ethereum be broken that it uh, be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah, son. Yea, ye, uh, if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Because, I mean, they're going to be gone in, what, um, 65 years. Don't worry about it. But that's kind of interesting. All right, so this prophecy comes to pass in 65 years, I guess. Jesus shows up what, 600 years later, more than that. Yeah, it was about him. It's all about him. Praise him. Moreover, the Lord spake again again unto Ahaz. The Lord did that through a, his little human conduit, Isaiah. Uh, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depths uh, or in the heights above. Now we're getting into the those prophecies that prove Jesus is real. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. <coughs> and he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? That must have been Isaiah, not God. Because how? why would God say that? Oh, that's right. He didn't say, thus saith the Lord in that one part. You know, it's like I, Nephi, you know, it lets you know. Uh, <laughs> what's, yeah, it's real important. <sighs> Therefore, the Lord uh, himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and shall bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel, which didn't happen. <laughs> butter and honey shall he eat. Was that really what happened with Jesus? Did he just eat butter and honey? I don't think the three wise men brought butter and honey. <laughs> Maybe they could afford to live that lavishly. <laughs> he must have been a little chubby boy. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, butter and honey shall he eat. That sure sounds like Jesus. That doesn't sound like a... Oh, God, what was that one movie, The Last Emperor? You know, about the, you know, the Forbidden Kingdom? And, I mean, that's what they sound like they're describing here. A royal child that, you know, I mean, you save its first BM even. You know, it's like sacred suddenly. It's really, I mean, nutty. That doesn't sound like a uh, carpenter's son. Yeah, butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken by both her kings in three score and five years. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. And it shall come to pass, I'm already stumbling over my words, and I was going to cram a second uh, chapter in. I don't know about that now. These are short chapters. I would like to read like three of them together, but I don't want to make long videos just because I can. Uh, so, yeah, maybe just this one. Then. We'll do one at a time. I, I, I'll put that link to 
my blog article on messianic prophecies uh, in future videos, wherever they bring up the subject. Oh, whoa. That ain't scotch. Whoa. Whew. All right. And it shall come, uh, wait, wait. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of Egypt. That fly, he's going to hiss at it. And for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. So he's got a problem with flies and bees. And they shall come, and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys, and in the holes of the rocks, and upon all thorns, and upon all bushes. See, boy, we just blasted past that virgin giving birth. That was really about the Son of God, the Savior of all mankind. You'd think they would have spent a little more time on it, and made it sound more like Jesus. Nice try, Matthew. Dickhead. Goddamn fibber. <sighs> In that same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired. So he's going to get a barber. Okay. <laughs> By them beyond the river. He's going to hire a barber beyond the river. By the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria is your barber? I'm just fucking around. This happened. Just getting rid of the week. On to the weekend. The head and the hair of the feet. What are you, a hobbit? <laughs> and it shall also consume the beard. That razor. It's... Alright. Damn. So Isaiah started this whole thing. I should have changed this to the Isaiah drinking game. It would have been a lot less typing. And probably more accurate. I mean, this whole book is just a total imitation of Isaiah. Biatches. I found you out. Ah, that was good. And it shall come to pass. In that day a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep. This sounds so like Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm remembering now. <laughs> uh, it, God damn, I can't do another chapter if it's going to be like this. Oh, fuck. Ah, mm, that was good. Uh, and it shall come to pass, for the abundance of milk, they shall eat butter. Ew. I hope they put some broccoli with that or something. Brussels sprouts or something. I mean, just butter. You guys know the Buddha? Just wondering. <laughs> He's a butter ball. <laughs> For butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. <laughs> All three of them. I don't know. I just. I don't know. I don't know. And it shall come to pass. Fuck me. Oh boy, oh boy. Ah, that was good. Alright. And it shall come to pass in that day, every place shall be where there 
were a thousand vines and a thousand silverlings, which shall be briars and thorns. With arrows and with bows shall men come hither, because all the land shall become briars and thorns. And all hills and that shall be digged, how do you, wait, all hills that shall be digged with the mattock, there shall not come thither the fear of briars and thorns. But it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and the treading of lesser cattle. And that's that. Pretty fucking impressive. That was one of Isaiah's prophecies of Jesus. That, I mean, if you blinked, you missed it. Not like, not like these prophecies, where they even name him. I mean, within, within just like maybe four chapters, they're calling him Jesus Christ. They, they, they. An angel whispered into Jacob's ear, the. This Jacob, not the real Jacob, if he was real. <laughs> His ear, they told, whispered the name Christ just a few chapters ago or so. And like I said, within at least five chapters, they're calling him Jesus Christ. Because Nephi had to top his uh, younger brother who came up with Christ. And he's the one who found out Jesus. Don't you believe it? Don't you believe it? Okay, I'll see you in uh, chapter 18 where there's more Isaiah ripped off and more messianic prophecies that are, are a mess and don't sound like they have anything to do with JC. So, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Peace out and have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>